Good evening. I think that we are connected with our brothers and sisters through Facebook. Therefore, I think it's appropriate to say welcome. We thank God for giving us the opportunity to meet. We ask you not just to pray for us, but to pray with us. I think today is a very special day uh, in our history. We are a young church, but we have deep relationships with one another. Let me give you a short talk so we can do some church related business after our heavenly father my mind my heart my tongue are all tools that belong to you please bless our ministry this evening with all the details we thank you that you make us partners with you thank you for all your unconditional gifts for giving us life health and peace and family but you also gave us commitment and duty so lord we ask you that you bless us and bless our worship we also ask you to bless our listeners and the people of this church, whether they were able to come or no. In Jesus' name, amen. If you uh, were checking our posts on Facebook, we decided to pick some keywords. And our keywords involve uh, serving and serving with gladness. Let me read the first four verses from uh, Psalm 100. I think they are appropriate for our topic and circumstances tonight. I'll talk for about 10 minutes and then we can carry on with the church business for tonight. Make joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. These words are wonderful. And I think in it has the, a great transforming power. In other words, it can transform the hearts of men. It helps us discern what is our priority. Let's serve the Lord with gladness. We have lots of um, miserable topics that we can talk about. There is no shortage in despair and misery. Everywhere we look, you can find some something to despair about whether it's the government, politics, international relations, uh, whether it's the relationships in family or the relationship between a citizen and the government, a student with the professors. Now our church is invited to discuss uh, the relationship between man and God, but also between man and his fellow man. Is there a, like a recipe? 
like we see recipe or protocols in medicine or things like that that we can get to that gladness or joy so I ask myself what is my service to the Lord and do I do it with joy so I decided to talk about joy we have shortage to talk about joy so I pray that whatever I say and those words will actually translate into action and feelings or desires in Deuteronomy 6 5 it says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength we go to chapter 10 and it says and now Israel what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God to walk in all his ways and to love him to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul simply to be able to serve God with gladness we must have a heart that is ready to receive that joy or gladness a joyful heart is able to express and show its joyfulness now there are three words that I want to unpack and then I can finish my talk three facts that we can talk about when we talk about our ministry to the Lord or service to the Lord the first is worship with worshiping with fear the worshiping heart it's a united heart I am not just the only person who's invited to worship with reverence but to worship as a part of a community and a united heart to that God in Romans 12 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service according to this verse what we are doing is a form of a practical way of worship when Jesus said to love our God to love your God with all your heart mind and soul means that our ministry in this church whatever it may be should reflect our love to God and our love to one another in Matthew 4 and verse 10 there is another definition for love it says then Jesus said to him away with you Satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve therefore we agree in this church that we worship in one united heart this verse reflects our deep understanding of God let's go back to Psalms 5 but let's do 3 and 5 know that the Lord he is God it is he who has made us and not ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture we know that God is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations in summary the more we know about God the more we understand and perceive the depth of his love in Matthew when the disciples asked Jesus when Lord were you 
hungry and we fed you or thirsty and we gave you water. And Jesus responded, whatever you do for those little ones, you do it for me. Everything we do for each other and those who are not part of our church is evidence for a one uniform heart or united heart. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.14, for the love of Christ compels us because we just we judge thus that if one died for all then all died in in acts it speaks about how united the early christians were they all participated in offerings and in sharing their properties We worship by our hearts. This is my invitation for you to worship with one heart. And worship is expressed in a overt way by serving. Whether in this church that we can see or in the invisible church referring to the body of Christ. Serve with gladness. The second part of that fact is joy. There is, it says, shout all of you. When we, when we serve the Lord has to come out of a joyful heart. There are times when I hear our songs and our expressions of joy, and this is good. In Corinthians, it encourages us by telling us why we, sh we serve with joy. And it says, so that we may serve God who we believe to be Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And is there any greater honor than that? Many of us complain in, in our work. M many of people do that. Sometimes we have to, we, we feel like we have to complain. Whether there are many times we serve God, yet we complain. One may start saying, I do this, I do that, which is good and we should do but if it is done in a complaining spirit we lose our joy we ask you now what should we do with that joy as a kind of service to the church in this stage of our existence and later on it's a great privilege to be given such kind of word, work. It's a, vi it's a great privilege to be ministers of the Lord. It's not just by having a, a past ordained pastor, but ministry is signified by having joy. Believe me, when I think about each one of you, I am filled with joy. And every group has its own um, gifts and talents. And these are all great works. And sometimes they go unnoticed. This is the this is service with joy 
We should not serve so that we can be noticed or acknowledged. When I was in Jordan, I went to a church. Maybe I mentioned this story before in a hurry. When I went to the church, I started looking around. And you know how some church have icons and nice drawings. However, I noticed more than one place, a big sign that has uh, written acknowledgments on it about people donating a large sum of money. Even in this church, we have we we have sincere servants who I think I'm pretty sure they're not seeking to build a name for themselves. Even until now, I share the numbers of donations with the rest of the board. I do not disclose the names of the person who donated. Not only do we have an offering box at the entrance, but we have lots of people who are generous with their gifts. We all are giving and giving should be done with a joyful heart. How do we worship in joy and happiness? By serving in that way. The other thing and the last point is to thank or God or serve God with a grateful heart. We thank each other for little things like buying a present or having someone uh, provide work recommendations or reference. Or for people helping us in hard circumstances. Don't you think that in this church we have room to grow in our gratitude? When we meet, we pray for each other, we smile at each other, we sing, and hopefully we can resume our little meetings after uh, the church is done. Don't, shouldn't we have unconditional gratitude? One, one time I had a discussion with one of my friends talked to me, you must be happy now that you are staying in BC with all the weather and the nice conditions. And he, I acknowledged that, but I also tried to tell him and he quickly realized what I was going to say, he said, you are missing your friends. This is not just a church for me. We should take, um, we should know about each other. We should know about the needs of each other. This is f for having one another and having that kind of support. We should also uh, be grateful. The service of mankind to God should come as a response from man to God, love. I am pretty sure because of the circumstances we are going through in this church, who is the one who is serving the Lord? 
It's the one who received the call and responded to the call. We are all called to serve God, regardless of what our address is. This night, I, I hope to get a clear answer about our commitments to the church so that we could say, here I am, Lord, use me. Tonight, we are going to vote for people who are going to serve us on this earth. Let's listen to what Jesus said about real service. In Matthew 20, from 25-28, it said, But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rules of Gentiles lord, oh, lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servants. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. When I read or hear these words, why do I come here? Our service in this world, if it is not dedicated to God, it will become a burden over our shoulders we would be scared of it. Our good example is the Lord Jesus. He, he is the reason for our existence. And if we do anything with any other purpose in mind, we are going to deceive ourselves. We should focus our eyes on Jesus. He is the chief of our faith. He completes our faith. Because of him, we have joy. And that joy is not uh, temporary, it's not a trick. We ask God with confidence to help us this night to make our, God, our hearts glad, to give us courage to serve, and to serve with joy. And from there sprouts faith and joy, so that we can have strength and activity and energy to serve. I would like to remind everyone, including those who are listening online, the privilege is that we are He. And the commitment or duty is not to turn our backs to God. This is the end of my talk. And here I want to thank God for giving us that opportunity to spend it together. So in sum, to worship and to serve with joy, but also to worship with gratitude. Just to remind you, our kids, before we end the night, would like to share a reading of the Bible to us. This is also one of ways we can serve. Thank you.